Uh, today we're going to talk about a, a lot ranging formula of them. So let's have a quick review about what we have learned so far. So we learned the theory of the optimum. We have a very simple and nice result uh, from this theorem. It tells us a necessary and a sufficient condition for optimum. For the candidate to be an optimum, the first variation of uh, the functional j must be zero. If we further want to know whether it's a minimum or maximum, it will require us to verify the second variation. If the second variation is greater than zero, we know it's a minimum. And if the second variation is less than zero, this is a maximum. So this is a fundamental theory that we need, we need to know. And all the future results are built upon uh, this theory. And uh, later on, we, we learn how to find an optimum of a functional in this form. And this functional is in this form of integration from t0 to tf, a function v. You apply this theorem of optimum by using calculus of variation, you will be able to find the result, which is formulated as an Euler-Lagrange equation. An Euler-Lagrange equation is given in this form, partial v partial x minus d dt partial v partial x dot is equal to zero. This is a necessary condition. And a sufficient condition for us to know whether it's a minimum or a maximum is required to verify the second partial derivative of v with respect to x dot. And if it's greater than zero, it's a minimum. And beyond that, we learn how to find an optimum of function with conditions. And over here, conditions are given as a function of g of uh, x t x dot t and, and time t is equal to zero. So in control, this is our dynamics, right? Because the dynamics give us a relationship between x dot x and the time t. To find the optimum of this functional, given this condition, we need to define an augment functional. This augmented functional, ga, is equal to the integration from t0 to tf for the Lagrangian. And this Lagrangian is the combination of uh, this function inside the integration of the performance index and uh, the constraints. If we have multiple constraints g, and we will have a multiple lambda. To find the minimum of a, a original function j subject to these conditions is equivalent to find the minimum of, a, of this augmented functional j sub a. Then we can apply the Euler-Lagrangian equation. It gives us partial l over partial x minus d d t partial l over partial x dot is equal to zero. At the same time, since we introduced uh, these uh, co-states, lambda, so lambda has uh, the same dimension as a g. Then we also need to have a partial l over partial lambda minus d dt partial l over partial lambda dot is equal to zero. And uh, this equation is the same as uh, the constraint, because by looking at this, and if we take partial derivative with respect to lambda, that will give us g. And, uh, and partial lambda dot, since in this function there's no lambda dot, that becomes g is equal to zero. And today we're going to make it more general. So we have to learn how to deal with the problem with uh, terminal cost. All we have done is to have the performance index in this form with the integration t0 to tf some function v. We haven't done anything with the terminal cost yet. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, how we're going to solve this type of problem. In this problem, tf and xtf are free. So here free means there is not anything fixed. So the initial condition is still fixed. That's the case in reality. We always know where our robot is, but you may not know what happens after 10 seconds or 20 seconds, or you may not even know when you are going to get to another spot. So this is why the tf can be free and xtf can also be free. So we're going to look at this in a general form. And after we get the result for this general form, we will be able to solve many more problems. So let's see how we do that. We already know that to deal with uh, the dynamics, we need to put that into the constraint. So the first step is to write the dynamics into this form, G. And the second step, we're going to find an augmented performance index. We already know some conclusion if we have this integration term and the problem will be solved. But we have this additional term. And what if we can put this additional term into this integration form? Maybe we will be able to see something similar to what we have done before. So let's see how we put this into the integration form. And if we want to put this into the integration form, 
and it will be time derivative of this, right? So we'll do ds over dt. So s is a function of a t, and we do the integration. If we do the integration of this, what do we have? It will be a s a function as a function of x t and a t evaluated at a time t f minus the value evaluated at a t zero. And we know that this term over here is equal to this integration plus s at a x t zero and t zero. So what is this? This is a simply a constant, right? It's at initial time. So now j becomes this function evaluated at t zero plus the integration of this v plus this. So this is what we have. So since this is a constant, and we can define a new functional, call it a j1. And this j1 is equal to this integration form. Right? We're getting we are getting closer. So now the problem is converted to find an optimal condition so that we can minimize j1 instead of the original j. So we also have the constraints, and we need we need to do the same thing to define the augmented function. We can define the augmented function at j of a that is equal to the integration from t0 to tf, the Lagrangian function l. And here the Lagrangian function l is equal to v plus ds over dt plus lambda transpose times the function g. G is a constant function, which is also the same as the dynamic equations. Now the problem is converted to find an optimum of the functional j a instead of uh, the initial functional j. By using the theory of uh, optimum, step five theory of uh, optimum, it requires us to find the first variation, the necessary condition for optimum requires the variation of uh, j a is equal to zero. We'll write the first variation of j a as a delta j a is equal to zero. Now we need to know what delta j a is. So let's just write this out in the next page. Here we already know j a is equal to that and we are trying to find the first variation, delta j a. And we have already learned how to find the first variation of a functional, but uh, not really in the form of uh, this integration from t0 to tf. Something you need to pay attention right now is that tf is free. To find the first variation of a delta j a, we need to start from this increment. Then we apply a Taylor theory expansion to its increment. That will allow us to find a the first uh, variation. Let's see how we do that. The increment of uh, the functional j a, and I will denote that as a delta j a. We'll write it in the form of a delta j a is equal to j a evaluated at a, a new value of u t minus j a at a, the optimum value of uh, u t. It is equal to the integration from t0 to t f plus delta t f l delta d t. And here, arrow delta represents the Lagrangian function evaluated at a u star plus delta u minus the integration of a l dt. And here, l is a function of x t, u t, lambda t, and t. Let's look at what we have. The first term, the integration limit is different from the second term. So let's uh, decompose the first term into two terms. And we know that the first term can be decomposed into the integration from t0 to tf plus the integration from tf to tf plus delta tf. Now we'll copy over minus the integration from t0 to tf, the Lagrangian function dt. Let's, let's simplify the second term. So we're going to keep the first and the third term here. And the second term will be approximated by using the functional L times the variation delta TF. And here, remember, this becomes an approximation. 
Now we're going to use the Taylor theory equation to find the first variation of uh, J A. So that is denoted as a delta J A. And if we apply Taylor theory equation about this optimal value in L, the first term will be cancelled. The second term will be partial L, partial X, times delta X, plus partial L, partial X dot, delta X dot, plus partial L, partial U, delta U, DT. And we, we can copy over the last term. And the second term over here is it contains delta X dot. If we want to solve for optimal condition, and we do not want to have a delta X dot term, because delta X dot depends on delta X. Let's see how we can replace this term. So we'll take this term out, the integration of that term, the second term here is uh, the integration of uh, partial L partial X dot times delta X dot. We can use the uh, integration by parts to convert it to a function of a delta X. Use integration by parts. And this is already the form of an integration of a V du is equal to uv evaluated from t0 to tf minus u dv. It becomes d over dt delta x dt. Let's see what this term is. This term is partial l partial x dot delta x from the value of a t0 to tf. Delta x at a t0 that is equal to 0. And this term just becomes delta x at a value of a tf. All right, let's put this term into the first variation. Then the first variation becomes of the functional j a, delta j a become like this. We're going to replace this middle term by the new term that we found. And this is a new term. Now we can combine this term with the integration because they have the same integration limit, right? So we're going to put this term in there and combine with the term of delta x. Remember, we have a negative sign over there. It will become minus, and since we already have the transpose, so we do not need to no, uh, we no longer need this transpose over here. And this term will be removed. So let's do it in a two-step process. Since it's this term and uh, this term, they have the same integration limit. I'm going to combine these terms together. It gives us move this to here with a minus sign, and this term will be gone. And remember, we already have the transpose over there. We no longer need the transpose over here. And uh, all the rest will be still the same. Let's look at the necessary condition. For us to get the optimum, the necessary condition requires delta j a is equal to zero. And since delta x and delta u, they can be randomly selected. For this whole thing to be equal to zero, and it requires the coefficient for delta x to be zero. Let's write it down on the next page. The necessary conditions for optimum is summarized as follows. The first requirement is the coefficient for delta x to be equal to zero, which gives us partial L over partial x minus d over dt partial L partial x dot is equal to zero. What is this? The, the euler lagrangian -like equation. And look at the second requirement. The coefficient for delta u should be equal to zero, which gives us a partial L over partial u that is equal to zero. And this is the optimal control. And the solution to this that gives us optimum, so this is why we can also write it in this form to indicate the optimal solution of u should satisfy this. And we use the subscript of a star represent the optimal control meet this requirement. And uh, similarly, uh, this Euler Lagrangian equation, we can do the same thing. We can say partial L over partial X at the optimum state 
minus d over dt plus l plus x dot at the optimum state and optimal control that is equal to zero. And in addition to that, it also requires the rest of the term to be equal to zero. This term is equal to zero. We'll copy this over here. And if we know this term provides the further constraints on oh, we have a addition we have an extra minus sign over here. And that's from the previous term that we forgot to remove. This term is equal to zero. This one gives us additional requirements, depends on the boundary condition. If a TF is a constant, then delta TF will be zero. And a if x tf is a fixed delta x at a time tf, well, there will be zero. Depends on the different requirement from the boundary conditions of this optimum control, you may have a different forms of uh, the last boundary condition. We're going to have some examples in the next lecture.